if, if you, know you know the song, the song sing, along. sing along. Hit it. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> It's the Carolina Cook, the Carolina Cook, and the Carolinas, 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 rock and roll to the gold. Everybody, Chef Anthony R. Britton here, the Carolina Cook, cooking, tasting, and eating the Carolinas. 2A food attainment in the building. Let's go, Chef! In this episode, we're going to be eating out of the water. In this episode, I'll be cooking up another country classic that not too many country folks even know about. Too many cars coming by. In this episode, I'll be cooking up some... Smothered meowfish. What's meowfish? Meowfish is catfish. It could be a combination of cat meat and fish meat. Who knows? That's right, y'all. We got the cat in the fish putting it together i don't know how you become a cat in a fish seems kind of fishy to me but yo let's take a trip inside of my mind and see how i did this let's go chef oh no 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 i'm definitely not going that way let's go chef all right i'm gonna start with the grits first you want to pour your grits into some hot water. I usually use broth. That's my preferred method, but I'll use water this time. And you want to whisk that grits while you're pouring it so that it doesn't lump up and remain smooth. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to hit the grits with some sneeze powder, which is black pepper. Then I'm going to hit it with some salt. Those are pretty much the two main seasonings you need for your grits. The black pepper is really going to give your grits a good taste. And of course, you want to peri periodically add liquid to your grits, whether you're using broth or water. And the longer you let your grits cook, the better. So stay on top of your grits as it cooks because the liquid is going to continually reduce as the grits cooks. So you don't want your grits ending up burning. So with that being said, you just cover your grits, cook it on a low simmer, and keep a check on the liquids. I know this top is too big for this pot, but like the saying goes, there's a lid for every pot. Now, I know onions get a bad rap for making people cry and a bad rap for giving you bad breath, but it does make your food taste good. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and slice up one onion, just one, since I'm making a small portion of fish. Now let's move on to prepping our catfish. All right, I got three catfish fillets here. I'm not mad at the cat and the fish that made these babies because they created some pretty tasty meat. All right, I'm gonna start by seasoning this catfish with some celery salt. Celery is a good accelerant to the taste of seafood. Okay, so I pretty much seasoned this fish with celery salt, black pepper, and Greek seasoning and a touch of dill. I said that celery is a good accelerant to the flavor of uh, seafood, but dill is as well. So I used them both. All right, and what you do for one, you gotta do for the other. So flip your fish and season the other side as well. Oh, and I forgot, I also used some adobo seasoning. So I really hit y'all three times with three different seasonings that really enhance the flavor of seafood. Adobo, celery, did and if you didn't notice i did not go heavy on the seasoning at all now what you want to do is rub that seasoning into the fish okay you want to make sure it's nice and coated well distributed throughout the fish the flavor in this dish the main component of the flavor will be coming from the gravy from what i smother the fish in not from the fish itself so you don't want to go too heavy on the fish seasoning. All right, so I'm gonna get ready to pan, fry, or pan sear my uh, catfish. So you just wanna add an adequate amount of oil to the pan, okay? All right, so I'm going to pan sear this catfish for about four minutes on each side. Um, 
I'm going to go a little longer on the top side than on the on the presentation side uh, to give it a nice sear. Um, so in order to know your fish is done, you're basically going to, you know, stick the fork in at an angle, twist it a little bit. If the fish is flaky, then that lets you know it's done. Or you can go about 145 degree eternal temperature. Now, like I said, I'm going to let my presentation side cook a little darker. So I flip the fish over and now I'm browning the top side. All right, once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the fish from the pan and reserve it until I'm ready to return it to the pan. All right, this is what I was talking about when I was talking about cooking the presentation side a little longer. That's the result right there. All right, now what I'm gonna do is leave that residue and goodness from that fish in the pan and add my sliced onions to it. And we're just gonna saute these onions around until they break down a little bit, become a little translucent and tender. And that's what we're going to make our uh, pan gravy with and smother our fish in. So once the gravy is done, we're going to return the fish to the pan. Now, everything about cooking this process, you got to pay attention to the transition of the food while it's cooking. Now, as you can see, the onions have tenderized a little bit, softened up. That's about where I want them. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some flour to the onions. Then we're going to just get a little roux going. And once it's brown, I'm going to go ahead and add some water. But before I add my water, I'm going to hit it with a little adobo seasoning, a little black pepper, which I call sneeze powder, a little chopped chives, which is another good flavor enhancer to seafood. I'm not worrying about my roux burning right now because I have the heat moderately low. All right, then I'm gonna add a little bit of dill to that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some chopped celery to that. These are dry ingredients, but once I add the water and the moisture, everything's gonna soften up. To intensify these flavors, I'm gonna add a little bit of Greek seasoning. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and add some water. And we on our way to making a good gravy. Now we're going to add our catfish fillets back to the pot. Get it nice and saturated with the gravy. Then I'm going to cover the fish and just let it cook on a low simmer until all those flavors and everything and juices and everything get inside of that fish. All right, periodically, you wanna come check on your pot. Make sure nothing's sticking, okay? And add more liquid if you have to. Now, back to the grits, all right? Y'all probably forgot about this grits, huh? Now what I'm gonna do is add some cheese to my grits, all right? And as you can see, this grits is nice, thick, and creamy. Check that out. Look at the consistency on that grits. It's like I said, the longer the grits cooks, the better. My mama used to just let that grits go, just let it cook slow and low to the point where it would form a thick, brown crust on the bottom and once we ate the grits we would like to go back and eat that crust like cake we would eat it like cake or a piece of bread or something but i'm not going to let my grits go that long of course and as you can see i added a piece of butter to the grits and this grits is pretty much done man i've added my cheese and my butter now i'm going to mix that around and keep it on a low heat and we're going to get back to the fish. All right, y'all. That gravy has reached maturity. That fish has reached maturity. So it's pretty much done. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to fix and present a plate. See, one thing you have to realize about country folks is we either going to fry everything or we're going to smother everything. 
it ain't too much foods that's exempt from being smothered. Okay. Nothing is exempt to include catfish. Okay. Got your nice extra gravy on the plate right there. And uh, got your catfish on a nice bed of grits. You can see the onions and celery and all that up in there. Catfish, nice, tender, flavorful. Grits, nice, cheesy, creamy, flavorful. Everything bussing. Once you get on it, you can't get off it. Thank y'all for watching. Like, comment, share the love, and subscribe. Get me into the rhythm of the algorithm by doing that. Just remember, when you're doing something good, you're going to only get better at it to a whole never level. All right. Like it, share it, thou the love, and subscribe it unto my channel. And smite it, that notification button. Thank you.